Mm -hmm. Mm, look at that. Isn't that grand? So this is Coffee Black Rye Pale Ale from Barnhammer Brewing. Um, what do we say here? Rich roasted coffee unfiltered rye pale ale. Oh wow, there is so much coffee in that. I'm going to be awake all night. Woohoo! You may remember this uh, monstrosity that I was working on a few weeks ago. Um, it's intended to be just sort of a motion base for a future eventual robotics project. Uh, and I was using this little module here to uh, as a motor driver, which is exactly what it is. But then I got to thinking, what else could I use to drive the motors? I mean, okay, so let's step back a minute. Uh, a motor driver is basically something that takes the low current 5 volt pulse width modulation signal from the microcontroller and turns it into a higher current signal, I guess for lack of a better word, a higher current uh, control for the motors. And these toy motors aren't all that high demand, but who knows, I might find something else to use and maybe even not in five volts. These particular ones are running off five volts. But. So I got to thinking, what are my options? Um, I mean, a pre-made module is super simple, but there are other ways of doing it. So the most common way of driving or controlling a, uh, a, a DC motor is using the good old H bridge. An H bridge is essentially four switches surrounding a motor. Um, if switch one and four are turned on, then the motor is connected to the positive and the negative in this way. And, turns in one direction. If switches three and two are turned on, then the positive is on this side of the motor and the negative is on this side of the motor and it turns the opposite direction, which is what this drawing here is showing. The voltage in this way or the voltage this way. Now that's a very simple way of doing it and these switches could be relays or they could be BJT transistors or they could be MOSFETs or pretty much anything. In a lot of cases, you can get them in in a, a single IC packaged, or you can create it out of discrete transistors if you want to. Um, there's a few warnings, though, a few things you have to look out for. These particular states right here, if you have switch 1 and 2 turned on, then you're going to short your power supply. Same as if you've got switch 3 and 4 both turned on, you're going to short your power supply. And a lot of the IC versions of an H-Bridge take care of that internally uh, but if you're building your own it's just something you got to look out for um, the other states you can have is with multiple switches open uh, so there's nothing on this side or nothing on this side and with those the motor coasts if you have um, both switches to the high side or both switches to the low side connected that essentially creates a short across the motor and if the motor is being driven by momentum or whatever, that essentially shorts its output uh, voltage, which it'll be creating, and it causes a braking type of thing. Um, obviously, as the motor gets slowed down, that reduces, but just something to keep in mind might be useful. But normally, there's just the these three types of states, motor moves left, motor moves right, and motor coasts that most people will want to use. So as the Wikipedia article said, you could either use discrete components or you could use integrated circuits. So what I have here is, is one, two, three different, I guess that is a fourth one as well, um, but I don't have the chip version of that. Um, so there's a few different ICs that can do this. And we'll take a little bit of a closer look at some of these. So the first one is the same module that I had, was playing with uh, in my little project there. Um, it uses the L9110S, and actually the module has two of them on it, so it can drive two separate motors. 
So there is the L9110 chip. And as you can see, it doesn't take a lot of circuitry to make it happen. As a matter of fact, none except for inputs and outputs. Because I don't have a loose motor that doesn't take up too much space, I'm just using a couple of LEDs backward or back to back. So when one is turned on, the other one is turned off. So if we put one input high, then we essentially have one direction of our motor, or in this case, just one polarity. And if we put the other input high, we get the other polarity happening. Now then we could replace either of those inputs with a PWM source, and then we can dim it. So there's on the one input, And there is on the other input. You can actually see the PWM happening a little bit on the camera until it speeds up. So, and again, those are just standing in for, for my motor. So that's an option. And that's, like I said, what I was experimenting with the other one. And this one has the H, well, let's, let's go take a look at the, uh, the data sheet of that chip and we'll just, just see what's going on inside it. Here's the L9110 chip. It's capable of uh, switching between 2.5 and, and 12 volts, but uh, 800 milliamp continuous current per channel. So that could be a limiting factor depending on what motor you're putting on it. It says down here somewhere it can handle up to 2 amps for a short period of time, but you wouldn't want to do that for very long, otherwise you risk letting the smoke out. Basically, it just has two channels, A and B in and A and B out, and then it's got two uh, VCC that are in parallel and two ground that are in parallel, which, uh, which basically just doubled up for current handling more than anything else. And here is the standard connection diagram for it. Um, the motor goes across the two outputs, forward signal and backward signal, and that's it. Um, Whichever one you take high causes the motor to do that magic. And if you pulse with modulate it or pulse it at all, that causes exactly the same thing to come out here, only with a higher current handling capability. So another option is the driver, which is on this board here, which is the L293 chip. Now this board is actually a shield for a Wemos D1 Mini, which I don't have any of at the time being. So I can't play with that one directly, but I do have the dip version of it here. So I'm gonna just hook that up to my uh, pulse width modulation uh, source and we'll play with that. Actually, let's, uh, no, let's, let's go and take a look at the data sheet for that guy first and just see what its uh, claim to fame is. The L293D quadruple half H bridge drivers, half H drivers. This is the version that I've got the dip of the 16 pin. It also comes in a 28 pin, which doesn't have any more functionality. It's just physically bigger. It has a little bit more heat sink and ground pins on it and a bunch of non-connected, I guess just to spread the heat around. I'm not sure. Anyway. It can handle a little bit higher voltage than the 9110 that we were looking at a minute ago. It can, it's minimum uh, voltage on the switch side is four and a half volts, but it can handle up to 36 volts and up to one amp per channel for the big version um, or 600 milliamps per channel for the 16 pin version. And here's the example diagram or the example circuit that they have in the data sheet, which is pretty much what I'm going to throw together on the breadboard in a minute here. Um, so because it's got four drivers, you can control four output lines. In this case, they've got these two lines, each going to a single motor. This one reference to ground and this one reference to the high side. Um, so uh, a high voltage on this is going to turn him on and a low voltage on this side is going to turn him on but these ones are just unidirectional. If you connect up two, as in this side, and again, in our more, there are familiar shape here. Um, so one of them drives one side of the motor, one of them drives the other side of the motor, take this one high and this one low, the motor goes in the one direction. Um, 
the opposite and it goes in the other direction. And then one other thing that this chip has, it's got a, an enable pin here. So you can just keep a steady pulse going on here and to stop the motor, you just take the enable low. And again, the same one over here, you can take them, stop them both just by taking pin nine low. Okay, this one's a little bit messier on there just because it's got two channels. But basically this is set up exactly the same as that uh, schematic that I showed you in the data sheet. Um, so these two are the two unidirectional motors and this pair over here is pretending to be the bidirectional motor. So right now I've got the, uh, the two inputs to the two different unidirectional motors common with my PWM input. And I've got the enable pin here, uh, pulled high. So now then with the PWM at fully at one end, um, hundred percent duty cycle, this one is on. And as I cro er, swing across, now I'm at 100% or 0% duty cycle. So this one is on, and that's exactly how it showed in the uh, in the schematic because one of the motors, LEDs in this case, was referenced to the high side and one is referenced to the ground side. Now that I'm just going to move things around and we'll connect onto this side and see what happens over here and obviously it's going to work the way we expect it to but let's just see it anyway okay so i've lifted the enable line for these two leds and i've pulled the enable line for this one high right now i'm connected to just one of the uh of the inputs with my pulse width modulation and there you can see again it controls that speed now then if i can if i connect my motor or my PWM to the other one, you notice it was still at hundred percent and that now it's running hundred percent in the opposite direction and vice versa. This demonstration will be a lot better if I actually had a motor that I could fit on here and show all this stuff simultaneously. But I, I, I hope this is getting the point across that it's just another way of controlling any kind of output current really and the polarity of it. So to you, to use this properly, you would again need two PWM outputs from your microcontroller, um, one for forward and one for reverse. So the other possibility, the other module that I've got is this one, which is the ULN 2003 chip. And this module generally is sold for controlling stepper motors, uh, the small little stepper motors that come in the big starter kits and whatnot. Um, and it's not an H bridge exactly either. It's a different implementation. Let me show you the data sheet. And here is that LN 2003A. Actually, it's a whole series of chips that are, that just have different, uh, packages and different, uh, current handling capabilities and whatnot, but it's the whole LN 2000 and something family. So they're rated at 500 milliamps per channel and it's got what do we got here seven channels on it it can handle it can switch up to 50 volts so that gives us some options but as you can see in the block diagram it's not really an h bridge it's just you know, darlington transistor arrays it's showing it as an amplifier here and i guess it kind of is a current amplifier but not really sort of um these are more typically used for those small, uh, small stepper motors. And I'm not going to run this one up, uh, in this demonstration. I'm just showing it to you as an option. So as it mentioned in the Wikipedia article, you could just as easily build these out of discrete components. And here is the BJT, the bipolar junction transistor version or one version of it. Anyway, this uses two PNP transistors and two NPN transistors. Uh, since I'm not putting a motor in there for my demonstrations, I'm not going to bother with these protection diodes in here. And I'm also not going to bother with these photo transistor or photo transistor based isolators, opto isolators. That's what they are. Um, in this example, he's talking about using those to keep your control signals completely separate and protected from your motor, motor voltage and any induced spikes and any other crap coming from there. 
So how this works, how he's got it wired here, because he's uh, using these opto-isolators, that also isolates the base current of each of these transistors too. So basically there's the pull-up or pull-down resistors and a series resistor on the base side. Those I'm going to leave in my circuit. And what he's got is this one and this one tied together onto one line, and this one and this one tied together on the other line. So when he hits his forward voltage, turns this guy on and this one on, and the motor rotates, you put the reverse on, um, that turns this guy and this guy on, the motor goes the other direction. So when we're using the BJT circuits, um, you have to be a little bit more careful because there isn't internal logic preventing you from creating a short. If you turn this transistor and this transistor on simultaneously, you're going to create a short straight to ground. Same thing with over here. So I've got this one, the top one on this side turned on, which pulls high. And I've got that turned on by pulling its base down because it's a uh, PNP. This one down here is an NPN. So I'm going to turn it on either by taking its base high, there you go, or by giving it a PWM signal, and then I can bring it up and down. Similarly, if I disconnect that, I can take the one, the PNP from up there, give it the PWM signal, and take the NPN over here and pull it high. And then I can PWM that one, which essentially, again, this is my forward and reverse directions, right? So that's another way. That's going to take four control lines, though, unless you use the opto-isolators like the schematic that we saw on the computer earlier did. And that's why he's using the opto-isolators, so that basically he can control two things at once um, without having to use four lines. I don't happen to have any opto-isolators kicking around right now. I'm sure there's some in a mailbag coming up soon, but I don't have any right now. Now let's uh, take a look at the MOSFET version of exactly the same thing. So here's the MOSFET version. It looks very similar in that, steam, that same you know, H-shaped thing there. So this one uses two N-channel MOSFETs and two P-channel MOSFETs up here and up here. Um, the P-channel MOSFETs are switching to the high side and the N-channel MOSFETs are switching to the low side. We've just got a pull-up resistor here and here, which in my example, I think I'm going to use 10K just because it's not that important. You just want something that's not going to drag that much current. Um, so that keeps it in a state where both of these guys are turned off and both of these guys are turned on. With, with two at the bottom turned on, that essentially has the motor shorted out. So that's that break condition that they were talking about in the Wikipedia article. So then you just have to switch the two gates low on one side or the other to cause either this, uh, no, either this one or this one to turn on. So if you switch this side low, that turns on off this guy turns on this guy and since this one's already turned on by the pull-up you get voltage through this way and the same thing if you leave this one open and pull this one down then you get uh your flow through this way right yeah yeah that's it and again the optocouplers are just to protect your logic supply from any spikes and crap generated by the motor. I have my PWM tied into the common gates of these two. Again, P-channel MOSFET, N-channel MOSFET, pull-up resistor preventing them from, uh, or putting them into a known state. Same thing on here, this side, pull-up resistor. So that pull-up resistor is basically turning on the N-channel and off the P-channel. Same thing here. But when we apply PWM to those gates, we get one direction or one of our LEDs coming up. Let me move that to the other side and run our PWM in. Then we get our opposite direction, or in this case, the other LED. 
which is kind of hard for you to see. Oh, there you go. So, I mean, that's, and these MOSFETs are the most powerful devices of all of these things. These are, what are they? So there's the N channel MOSFET that I'm using. There's the IRF Z44N. It is, what do you got here? Rated for max 49 amps, um, continuous at 100 degrees Celsius, 35 amps. What is its voltage? Oh, there you go, 55 volts. And the P channel MOSFET is a uh, IRF 9540, which doesn't have exactly the same specs. It's got a little bit higher voltage, a little bit lower current. So now, of course, I have to ask myself, which one of these options am I going to use in my little cheesy robotics project here? I honestly don't know. Um, this is a fairly clean option. It doesn't have optocoupling. I think whatever I'm going to do though, I think I am going to optocouple it just to keep the noise from the switching and the motor uh, noise and the inductive kickback and whatnot out of my data control lines. When I was working on this thing originally, I just put a capacitor on there across the motor, across the power lines just to smooth it out so that the motor noise wouldn't be getting into the microcontroller. But I can't do that until I get some optocouplers in, which I'm sure are somewhere in transit or in the mailbag stream somewhere. But until then, I have a little bit of thinking to do and a little bit more experimenting to do, but that's just an overview of controlling motors using a few different methods from a microcontroller like an Arduino. I hope anybody who is thinking about getting into this uh, found some of this useful and I hope it wasn't too misleading. Anybody with more experience or who spotted something that I did completely and totally wrong or stupid can please comment down in the comments. Um, or anybody who thought this was great has other suggestions for different motor driver methods. That would be awesome too. As always, thanks for watching and I will talk to you later.